The coral reefs worldwide are rapidly declining. You may think tourism can only harm the reefs, but that is only part of the story. How could your holiday help the reefs? This is the University of the Netherlands. As a kid, I always had my head underwater, mesmerized by all the creatures in the sea. And what sparked my curiosity then still drives my research. As a marine biologist, I study the diversity of species and the environment they live in. This is also known as biodiversity. In particular, I'm interested in coral reefs and how the reefs can adapt to changes in their environment. To do this, I spend a lot of time below the water surface, sometimes in a submarine, but mostly scuba diving and free diving. And with my head underwater, I was for the longest time ignoring humans, at least in my scientific research. I was just focused on all that was happening within the magnificent shapes of the coral reef. All that changed when I kept bumping into tourists at my research sites. The numbers of tourists have soared in the places where I work in Indonesia and the Dutch Caribbean. And I started to wonder, what is the effect of the tourist on the coral reefs below the water as well as on the societies above water who depend on the reefs for their livelihoods. So I decided to come up for air to get a better grasp of tourism in relation to conservation and coral reef biodiversity. In this lecture, I will tell you about the current state of the coral reef, how we can help the reefs with local management and how your holiday can have an influence. First off, what is a coral? Corals are animals. They live in compact colonies of polyps and they secrete calcium carbonate, basically limestone, which provide a hard structure on which the reefs are built. Corals live together in association with an algae inside of them. They're called zooxanthellae, zooks for short. And they have made a deal with the zooks. The zooks get shelter and use the waste products of the corals, and in exchange, they produce food and oxygen for the corals to survive. Just like leaves on a tree, the zooks do photosynthesis, and they need sunshine to produce sugars and fats, the food for the corals. And they get the best light from the sun when the water is clear. So as a rule of thumb, just keep in mind that corals need clean, clear water to survive. Anything that reduces the clarity of the water can harm the corals. When you think of coral reefs, this is probably what you imagine. Lots of healthy, hard coral, where most of the reef bottom is covered by coral. Unfortunately, this is also a reality. Few live corals, a high cover of algae, sponges, and these red slimy layers that are called benthic cyanobacterial mats. These mats consist of bacteria that are toxic and de deplete the bottom of oxygen, which the corals and other animals need to survive. Now, both algae and cyanobacterial mats prevent coral larvae and many other species from growing. And in small amounts, they're part of a healthy reef. But when they become dominant, that's bad news for corals. Now, worldwide, healthy coral reefs have declined greatly. Over 50% of the world's coral reefs have died in the last 30 years. The main causes for the reef decline are climate change, overfishing, and low water quality. All of these are human induced. So why does this matter? Why should we conserve coral reefs? First off, reefs are often referred to as the rainforests of the ocean. Corals build the reef structure and provide a home for thousands of species including a fourth of the world's fish. For people living on an island, fish is the main protein source. In that way, reefs offer food security. Now, the hard structures of the coral reefs also offer natural coastal protection, especially in areas frequently impacted by hurricanes and tropical storms. Now, the great biodiversity of coral reefs can also serve as an important source for new medicinal remedies. Anyone who has cold sores most likely uses a cream with acyclovir. That's a compound that was originally derived from sponges in the sea. Now, let's take a step back and have a look at the whole ocean. Do you know that 50 to 70% of our oxygen is produced by sea organisms? So every second breath you take 
you should be grateful to the sea. What's crazy is that it was only about in the 80s that it was discovered that a large part of this oxygen is produced by a bacteria, Prochlorococcus. So humans had been very happily breathing for some thousands of years without knowing where their oxygen came from. Think about that. We depend on the sea in so many different ways, simply without being aware of it. There be, may be many more services that the sea provides that make our life very enjoyable, but that we currently have no idea about. To me, that seems like a good enough reason to be quite careful with our seas. Back to coral reefs. Coral reefs have had a lot of stress lately. Stress from global processes, such as climate change, which causes the water temperature to increase and resulted in many corals to, to die off. Also, local problems weaken the reef, such as overfishing and low water quality due to pollution and runoff from untreated sewage. But what gives me hope is that increasing evidence shows that a collapse of an ecosystem can be prevented by altering the conditions that can be managed locally. If we can reduce the local stress, we can make the reefs more resilient to climate change and it buys us a little bit of time until we get our act together on a global scale. Compare it to the human body. When you're fit and you sleep well, you're more likely to recover from sickness than when you're really sleep deprived and stressed to begin with. And that's where tourism comes in, because tourism is a major force of local change. To give an example, I work in Raja Ampat, West Papua in Indonesia, and this area is the epicenter of the world's marine biodiversity. It is a conservation priority area but it is also absolutely stunning. It's a diverse paradise. As such, it's actively promoted for marine tourism. And when I started working there in 2007, about 900 entry tickets were sold to tourists that year. Last year, it was over 30,000. This was followed by a rapid increase in ferries and building of hotels. Now, tourism is predicted to grow rapidly worldwide in the coming decades. And you can imagine that that has quite an impact. However, many tourists are simply unaware of the effect that they can have. One of the problems of tourism is the garbage that ends up in nature, particularly a lot of single-use plastic. Also, the large increase in tourism creates a demand for coastal development of hotels and other constructions along the coast. This can have serious knock-on effects for the coral reefs. Construction close to the shoreline causes sediment to enter the sea, which covers the reefs and blocks out sunlight. But remember, corals need clean, clear water to survive. Now, the COVID-19 crisis caused tourism to come to a grinding halt and laid bare how painfully vulnerable countries are if they rely too heavily on tourism. For example, the economy of Aruba relied for almost 90% on tourism, and this pretty much stood still when the tourists stopped coming. You can imagine how hard that must have been for these people. And then there's marine traffic. More tourists mean more boats, typically with polluting diesel engines, and more boats mean, means more chances of colliding with marine life, such as whales and sea turtles. Also, I've been underwater when a cruise ship comes by, it is seriously noisy. Studies show that noise from large vessels can harm animals in the sea in various ways. Now these cruise ships typically house about 3,000 people who all need to go to the toilet. An average weekly cruise produces about 795,000 liters of raw sewage that gets dumped directly into the sea. That's about the weight of 214 African elephants of sewage going into the water. Now, you may be surprised to hear that the toilets are a big problem for corals. Many tropical islands do not have highly developed sewage systems and lack centralized sewage treatment facilities. In some cases, everything is just flushed directly into the sea over the reefs. In other cases, everything is contained um, in a septic tank or in a cesspit on land, but it still can seep through the ground into the sea. And why is this a problem? Basically, sewage in the reefs works like manure on land. 
It fertilizes the reef with all kinds of nutrients. But it's not the corals that grow. This helps the algae and the cyanobacterial mats grow. Remember those from the beginning of the lecture? When algae and cyanobacterial mats become dominant, that's bad news for corals. Furthermore, sewage is linked to increased coral disease and, and just simply isn't that great for human health either. So you never see this, of course, as a tourist, but it'd be great if you could become more aware. I am fascinated by the double-edged sword that tourism presents. If left unchecked, tourism can be a great strain to ecosystems and societies alike. But if managed well, it can also support conservation. Some positive points for tourism. When I look at cruise ships, I see thousands of people pour out onto a small island of, let's say, Bonaire, which is only inhabited by about 20,000 people. And I could imagine that this is pretty overwhelming for the local citizens. But when I asked a local resident, an elderly lady of about 70 years old who was born and raised on Bonaire, when I asked her what she thought about the cruise ships, she said, it's fantastic. Since these ships started coming in, we got running water and electricity in our homes. Maybe the link isn't that direct, but economic development and tourism are definitely connected. This means that tourism can be a source of income. It can provide many jobs, and in particular, it can provide alternative jobs for fishing, which we discussed before can be quite problematic for the reefs if done too much. Many reefs are in remote areas that are hard to patrol regularly. Patrolling is needed to prevent overfishing, illegal and destructive fishing, such as with homemade bombs. Now, tourism can function as a sort of informal patrolling because tour operators will do their best to prevent blasts as this damages the reefs and bombed out damaged reefs is simply not what the tourists came to pay to see. So basically, tourism can function as an extra set of vigilant eyes on the reefs. Now, a common means of conservation is through marine protected areas or nature parks. One way to finance these parks to keep them running smoothly is by charging tourists entry fees. In this way, tourism can actually finance nature conservation. So the right amount of tourism can help protect the coral lead to more patrolling and financing of marine conservation areas. But it's not simply an adding game where the more tourists, the better. It's a continual balancing act weighing the benefits versus the costs of tourism. Now we're all tourists at some point. Um, so you can think about the influence your vacation could have. If we all change our preferences, the hotels will follow. After all, they're just accommodating us. Some things you could consider. Remain vigilant about plastic. The less use means less plastic that can end up in the sea. And definitely ask your hotel how they dispose of waste. Also, reconsider that beachfront view, as construction on the shore often means destruction of the reefs. And ask yourself, should you really go for the cheapest option for your tropical travels? Making a sustainable accommodation just isn't cheap. And the low budget holiday means there is very likely a cost for the environment that you're simply not paying for. And don't forget to ask about the toilets. A good hotel should have a closed sewage system where the wastewater doesn't end up in the sea. It would be great if people were a little more aware of the toilets and the water treatment systems in their travel destinations. What if online travel review sites gave out stars for the sewage system? That would start some changes. To summarize, many of the coral reefs worldwide are under severe threat. The three major causes of coral reef decline are climate change, overfishing, and low water quality. On the bright side, if we can optimize the local conditions, if we can reduce the local stress, we can make the reefs more resilient to climate change and it buys us a little bit of time until we get our act together on a global scale and we can deal with the global carbon emissions. Your holiday plays a role in that because your holiday influences the local conditions. It can both help and harm the reefs. On the one hand, tourism leads to extra pressure from waste, construction, and sewage. 
but it also can contribute to marine conservation through entrance fees and informal patrolling of the marine areas. So the next time you book your trip, think about where you go and what the effect will be on the local environment. Maybe reconsider the beachfront view. Maybe even ask about the toilet. But definitely, don't only think about the price you pay, but also about what your travels may be costing the environment that you wish to experience. Thank you for listening. <laughs>